listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cricket Podcast, where we're uh, we're moving over to India and Pakistan, and it's time for the Asia Cup. Um, obviously, Asia Cup is uh, is now into the Super Fours stage. We've uh, we've lost Nepal. What a shame! And we've uh, we've lost Afghanistan in uh, slightly. Um, Slightly amusing circumstances, let's say. It, it threatened to be uh, one of a, one of those great tales of um, unexpected comebacks and ended up being a bit more like South Africa trying to calculate DLS, but um, never mind. <laughs> it gives us something to, to talk about um, aside from the, the usual, which is a tournament designed to make sure India and Pakistan play each other in an international tournament <laughs> as much as they possibly can. Um, where would you like to start, Ross? Um, it's rained a bit. I think it's probably mm-hmm. fair to say. I think most of the games have been rain affected at some point or another. Um, I think that um, it was a shame that Pakistan lost the opportunity to beat India, um, but you saw saw the benefit, I think, from giving people so many chances. Ishan Kishan really kind of stepped up in, 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 in that um, area. Um, it was nice to see Nepal play some cricket. I haven't seen Nepal play cricket really before. <laughs> um, and it was also interesting to see how I don't know, um, maybe not how strong, but um, kind of how um, how Sri Lanka performed. Like they've they've had a series of like really significant injuries to some of their better players, um, and actually they come out of the group stage unscathed. Um, and yeah, I think just uh, just just. <laughs> um, but there, there, there is that bit, right? Uh, I, f- I found it increasingly like Afghanistan are one of those teams for me. Like they are really really fun to follow. Um, but kind of this this stuff, like you've got to get the basics right. And whoever was sitting there in their heart, whether it's their analyst, whether their manager or whatever, even some of their players, right? No position you're in. They can sit and blame the umpires. So before I go into a bit more of that rant, Max, can you tell our wonderful listeners kind of what happened mm. in, in that space? Yeah, so um, uh, Sri Lanka will play Afghanistan in the, the, final, um, the final group match. And essentially, Afghanistan needed to uh because of the because they got absolutely battered by Bangladesh and they had a horrendous net run rate um not only did they need to beat Sri Lanka they needed to do it in about 37 overs of the of the chase batting batting second if they were to overhaul the net run rate and actually um in doing so they would be uh overtaking Sri Lanka and um and knocking them out in the process so it was a it was a real um a real knockout uh knockout situation Afghanistan started pretty well with the ball they kept Sri Lanka down to 291 it could have been less than that but there was some um, some late late hitting um, which allowed Sri Lanka to get up to a, a slightly higher score than they would have than perhaps been liking to <laughs> wanting to to chase Mahesh Tikshana of all people 28 of 24 at, at has, he end, hit, have he, has he ever hit a six before in uh, well he has game. now <laughs> um I uh, yeah not not really much with the um with the bat but he um he uh yeah he he got them got them those crucial extra runs that they uh they needed and it you know it, Afghanistan looked fairly comfortable in terms of they were likely to win the game at the halfway stage, but they needed to chase down 291 in 37.1 overs. And that never looks like happening um, until Mohammed Nabi, um, who must be about 52 by now. <laughs> um, he, he he turned up and smoked 65 off 32, um, Supported by um, uh, a motley crew, Karim Janak, 22 of 13, Najibullah Zadran, 23 of 15, and Rashid Khan, 27 of 16, to get them to the point where they were actually well in with a shout of doing this from, from nowhere. Um, but they they lost a, lost a few wickets um, and they got, they were in, they were, so they were 276 for eight. On thirty five point four, so they had um, nine balls to get um, what what would have been sixteen sixteen runs. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you know, T twenty finish easy, um, and yeah, they lost uh, lost another wicket on um, on the on thirty uh, two hundred eighty nine on uh, on thirty seven point one, and Fazlhak Faruqi obviously thought that was over. 
But it wasn't because if they'd managed to get their score up to 295, um, which obviously they'd have been able to do if they'd got the scores level and scored a four or by hitting a six at the time, they had three balls to do it. Um, so 295 in 37.4 overs would also have been enough to overhaul the net run rate. But um, nobody told them. So well, uh, Fazal Hack Faruqi well, blocked two balls out and then was out OBW. Yeah, that is um, yeah, ultimately a disaster. And that, that's what it comes down to, right? The, I was starting off my little rant before, like, get the basics right, guys. Like, cricket, ultimately a game of maths. <laughs> like, if you're going to be in that position, know, know what position you need to be in. And it's yeah, really disappointing where you've you've still got this kind of stuff happening. Like, there's so much um, of information around the game. There is so much around it. Like, just do those basic things. And there almost needs to be a bit of a bloody checklist for teams just be like right do you know all these kind of different scenarios and i recognize that there's an effort that needs to be put into that but for goodness sake like it has cost them it's international here. professional sport <laughs> it, it, i think exactly, effort right? is the name of the game <laughs> yeah and so you look at it and so yeah and sri lanka can turn around and be like yeah unscathed get into it the teams of like, people are hitting the runs like they're, they're doing okay um but yeah i think it is yeah it's a bit of a bit of a shame for afghanistan to uh, miss out again um who, and I mean this politely, never mind. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to the Super Fours, obviously we've got Pakistan, uh, India, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Um, I think, again, this is a beautiful appetizer for the World Cup. And um, again, with Bangladesh, I just I just don't see, I just don't get excited, unfortunately. I just there's not, there's not a bit around it where I'm just like, these guys play really exciting cricket. They do this kind of stuff. Um, they obviously lost to Pakistan in the opening game of the Super 4. And it's, yeah, it just, it just doesn't do it for me, unfortunately. They, they, they don't embrace, I think, some of their qualities that they have as a team. Um, and they've the, the, the weaknesses they've got are more glaring. Um, they just haven't pressed on since getting kind of the, the more um, worldly status um, that, they've, that they've been bestowed upon them. Um, but Max, in terms of the Asia Cup, I think it's going to be a Pakistan-India final. They're going to play each other again. Um, so they should play each other two more times in the next week or so. Um, that's mega for cricket. Absolutely mega. Um, and what we want to see is that battle. And what I think we're increasingly seeing is two very contrasting styles. Mm. Pa- Pakistan's ODI cricket and along with their test cricket and T20 cricket, complete and utter lottery of how they're going to perform, as we well know, which is absolutely amazing to follow. But they're also, they're aggressive. They look to take wickets all the time. They look to hit quick runs. They are, they've got people who can also, you can bat around, right? If you compare England being the ultimate white ball team from a couple of years ago, they had the mixture of explosiveness and the people who could bat time into the different scenarios that you were talking about earlier um, and good wicket takers in all the phases. And actually, that's what I think what Pakistan are really, really close to in this ODI team. Um, and you've seen numerous occasions, Shaheen Afridi has got the wood over a couple of their players. And that is a really dangerous place for India to be. And I think if India um, don't come out of this with at least winning one of those games, that's going to be alarm bells ahead of a, a domestic World Cup. Mm. It's, um, it's, it's, a really interesting, it's a really interesting set of four teams. Um, because they're also contrasting, I think. You, you, Bangladesh, like you say, they're sort of, you know, they're not they're not that not that interesting when perhaps they, they could be. Sri Lanka, I mean, they're um they're even more of a lottery than Pakistan. <laughs> um, but you know, you always want to see them do well, I suppose. Pakistan have got absolute fire with the ball. Like the Harris Ralph, Nazim Shah and um, Shaheen Afridi as a, as three paces to open up your innings is as fierce as it gets really in, in world cricket. But then there's, um, I guess a little bit of a, a step off. I mean, Shadab Khan's a, a good, a good player, but then they've got, I guess, three people who bowl serviceable off spin and some dibbly dobblers, I suppose, <laughs> if you want to be a bit, a bit harsh. Um, so, you know, they've got their, um, they've got their own gaps to, to fill. And then like you say, India um, going for the, going for the safe approach. So it's it's going to be really interesting to see which which of those win out. But I mean in terms of the World Cup, like having a having a tournament with all these guys playing just it's basically a about as good a warm up as you could get for a World Cup, isn't it? Uh, a high compared to some T20 series <laughs> against New Zealand and some games against Ireland. It's a, it's a slightly different preparation, isn't it? Yeah. Um it's 
so I mean, we'll see. We'll see how uh, how much that helps in the early phase of the tournament. Obviously, um, Max, if England what, what, go and lose to Bangladesh, people will uh, people will use that as the excuse. Yeah, maybe. Uh, again, we have to think around those conditions that we're going to be playing in, all that kind of stuff, right? But again, if any, t- this is what I like about the Asia Cup is that it's like the Catalina wine mixer. Anything can happen. Um, but Max, what I didn't like was um, the captain Rohit Sharma of India, mm. as we well know, or Barat, if uh, things are going to be playing out that way, if you've uh, seen the rumours that um, India's going to change its name to Barat, um, that he had a picture and signed um, Lamachane's shirt, which I thought was a little bit obtuse, if I'm perfectly honest, um, and not really what um, should be being set as an example from a captain of what well, representing a billion people. I mean, it's shocking enough that he's even there, Lamachani, yep. let alone, you know, uh, yeah, Rohit Sharma going and mixing with him. I mean, we don't, you know, you don't want to look at this and be like, Rohit Sharma's the 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 worst the worst guy in, in this um, in this situation, because obviously when you've got a, um, a situation like you do with Lamachani, um, it's, it's really questionable that, obviously, I mean, yeah, look, Nepal, they're in the... They're in this tournament. They want to give themselves the best shot they can, and they feel like they should play their star player. But there are bigger things than a sporting competition, and um, you know what he's accused of is um, pretty bad. So, uh, um, and that's you know that's a pretty well facetious way of flippant way of, of describing it. So, oh, the, I mean, the guy's, there's, the there's the obviously guy's, that. What? The guy's allegedly a paedophile, isn't he? He's a paedophile yeah. racist, allegedly. Um, and allegedly, so allegedly, but the trial but... the trial's been delayed. He was supposed to be on on trial before yeah. um, before this competition. So he's currently awaiting trial for 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 these um, for these crimes and allowed to play for his national side. Which, yeah, first things first. That's uh, that's pretty questionable. You know, even if you did end up being found not guilty while under suspicion of something that serious, you shouldn't be anywhere near representing your country in a in a sport. And then you know, afterwards you can look at it and be like, fine. But um, at the time, absolutely not acceptable. Um, and yeah, I mean, when you're, you know, Ro- Rohit Sharma, like you've got to know better. That's really poor. And this, I mean, but, uh, compare, compare and contrast it, right? The Scottish team um, didn't, didn't shake, shake hands, hands with him. Yeah. And you like, there, there is a, there is a bit like everyone knows what's going on and you can't tell me otherwise. And I think it's, yeah. Um, yeah. A dereliction of duty is how I would put it um, for it. Mm. And I think at the moment, um, yeah, fundamentally it's just not acceptable. So, but let's talk about the World Cup squad before we go down into a rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> something that isn't allegedly. Um, yes, sensible. So India's World Cup squad, we said at the top of the show that I think it's a little bit conservative, um, mm. but there are sparks in there that I think, do you know what this is? This this could be, um, this could be a World Cup winning squad, which I think is exactly where you, where you want it to be. I think with the inclusion of uh, Suryakumar Yadav, um, they've got, they've got spice in the mix, right? They've got somebody who has got that flair in the middle order that um, I think they sometimes miss. He hasn't been a huge hit in ODI cricket as of yet. Um, I'm not sure they've quite figured out his best role. Um, and I think that's been quite difficult And the chopping and changing over the last 18 months of let's give everybody a go um, that R- Rahul, uh, Rahul Dravid's taken upon. It's quite interesting. Um, I think where there's some other areas, Max, um, but I probably should run through the squad. We've got Rohit Sharma um, as captain, Hardik Pandey as vice captain after obviously winning the IPL. Um, Shuman Gill is in there, obviously the golden boy. Virat Kohli, Shreyas Iyer's back from injury, and so's Kale Rahul. Um, you've got the two left-arm spinners in Jadeja and Akshar Patel. Um, the Lord is there in Shardul Takur. Um, Boomer's back. Siraj is in there. Shami's in there. The redemption arc of Kuldi Yadav continues. And you've got Ishan Kishan, the mulleted rock star. Um, on paper, sounds like a, sounds like a, a, a fun team. Um, but Max, I think this is not a team that is going to go and try and hunt down 400 runs every game. Is no, it? I mean, they, this team, well, this squad is basically going to guarantee you 300 runs every game. I mean, they've got some of the some of the best batters in the world at doing that. I mean, I mean, Shubman, I mean, Shubman Gill, to be fair, he could he could go ballistic 
no, he's we've seen it and he is um he is star quality. But yeah, Coley, Aya, Kale Rahul, um I mean that's about as solid <laughs> as a, as a middle order as you could possibly look for. Sky, yeah, maybe. And and even Hardik Pandya has turned himself into an anchor recently. <laughs> so I don't know if he's gonna be coming in at, at six or seven and trying to bash um 30 off 10 at the end it's 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 hard to know but i mean there's there's such good players that i mean that even you know whatever whatever approach they take that is going to be a a hard side to beat and with um if boomer is you know firing even at 90 percent of his capacity if siraj channels his um frustrations in the right direction and you know we all know what Mohammed sham is like then even though scoring 300 against them is going to be pretty pretty tough but there are there are some questions aren't there there are some some slightly odd decisions i think sort of um, again with the same theme of you know picking a team that's designed to knock the ball around and score 300 there's a, there's a few positions that are all a bit a bit samey aren't there and you're trying to you think about what lineup they'll pick and you, you wonder where the where the variation is yeah i, I agree and i think that with so having jadeja and akshar patel in the same 11 is always a bit questionable, I, th- I think, in ODI cricket. Um, I can understand it when they do it in uh, Ahmedabad and playing test cricket, don't get me wrong. Um, but I think in ODI cricket, there is a little bit around matchups. The game is a little bit different. Um, and in terms of uh, kind of the batting that you get from it around where people play, etc., I, I just find it a little bit questionable. Um, where they do play together, that's something to be seen. Right? Yeah, but um, it's no, no, no bad thing having kind of backup for Jadeja because Akshar Patel is a brilliant yeah. backup for um, Jadeja. Um, I like Kuldeep Yadav being in this team. Um, I think that um, his redemption is absolutely fantastic and a real thing to be kind of proud of if you are uh, a Yadav. Um, but I think there's also <laughs> a piece here that they're picking someone who is attacking. And I think if they use him in that attacking role and kind of go, do you know what? He's going to go for some runs, but he's going to pick us up some wickets here. That is what they have to do. And I think that sometimes India can be accused of not being attacking enough with the ball or with the bat. Um, And Max with the the daunting um, ring bell in the background there. Um, It's a shame for someone like Yuzi Chahal that he's kind of fallen out of the picture completely because, again, it's kind of attacking bowling. But Kuldeep being there is a a nice place to be. Um, And then... Shardul Takur, what an absolute worst pick that is. <laughs> that is absolutely like what you like picking a bowler for their batting when you're the favourite. I find is quite amusing in your in your, in your home territory, um, especially when they've gone for this conservative batting lineup anyway. And I think I think increasingly in, in every single format, you're finding people who like bowlers who can um, bowlers who can bat right. And I think it's really important that you do bat deep. When you're someone like India, you've got to be trying to back your top seven. Like if you look, if you look at around who their top seven is going to be in terms of what Rohit Sharma uh, opening up with Shubman Gill, you're going to have what Virat Kohli at three, Shreyas Iyer at four, Kale Rahul at five, Pandya at six, Jadeja at seven. Is that is that what, what I think is going to happen? When you're then picking Shardul Takur potentially at eight. Well, I'm not, I'm not, like, that's assuming that Kale Rahul is in there as a um, a batsman. It could be Kishan. But I'm, I'm I just not, um, yeah, just not convinced that this is the right thing for them. Um, and I'm just very much, I'm very much in the uh, opinion that we need to see where it goes. You've got Jasper Brumra, who's going to offer so much with the ball. Siraj is obviously fantastic. He's been one of the elite bowlers um, in world cricket over the last couple of years. And then Mohamed Shami is someone who just continues to take wickets, even if he looks like he's like 55 years old. Um, but I think picking Shardle to core is just yeah, a bit of a worse selection. And what I would have liked to see is them take a bit of a take a bit of a risk. Um, where I do understand it is that potentially they feel like they've got too many number elevens. Like Shami's a bit of a number eleven. Bumra definitely. Everyone's is a number eleven to you though, Ross, aren't they? Yeah, um, Hasaranga definitely is. Um, and, <laughs> I mean, cool deep, yeah, but I can I can see why they've done it. I just think it's a bit of a worse pick. If I'm if I'm that strong. I'm kind of going, do you know what? We've got a great team here. But yeah. Well, it's sort of um, you know, if you remember Dan Weston, who's sometimes on the show, <laughs> haven't seen him in a while, but um it's almost like he the way he talks about luxury players, isn't it? And um this, you know, is Charlotte Thacker good enough to get into the side purely on his bowling? Probably not. Is he good enough to get in the side on his batting alone? 
probably not but it's um it's something that india have, have struggled with isn't it and sort of getting a finding that pace bowler who can provide you with a bit of ballast down the bottom of the order so um it does it does sort of make sense and you know he's he's got a bit of a a golden arm at times as well doesn't he? he's uh the um he always seems to chip in with with something so um it depends i think how many overs they can get out of hardik um you know if he, if he comes in and can bowl six overs a game then then maybe it's not um such an issue or arguably if, if you can get six overs out of hardik pan you don't need shuttle thicker at all but we'll um yeah uh, we'll see how it goes i suppose Absolutely, um, but I think yeah, their their squad like it's really it's super strong. Like on paper, that is a strong side. I think they are going to play kind of to their strengths, and their strengths, as you say, is a little bit more kind of conservative cricket. Um, they know the conditions really well, um, and I think that's the, their best way of, or they think is their best way of doing it. Um, I think what they might come up against though is teams who have evolved a little bit more than they have, um, and you they might become victims of a performance where a team does go out and absolutely blitzes their bowling all over the place and um, they're left kind of in a sticky position where they have lost a surprise game against the Sri Lanka or against, or against Pakistan or in England or whatever right and they that's find right, themselves 150 yeah, yeah like really in, in that position and that's the risk because um, I'm not sure yeah. they do that like, I'm not sure they've got the players to go up a gear go up another gear go up another gear unless you're going to get an, an like and unsurprisingly, and another elite performance from someone like Virat Kohli, which is definitely not off the cards, right? Because he's King Kohli. But mm. I just, you know, wanted to see something a little bit different um, and a little bit more attacking. But yeah, I mean, we, you know, we've we've uh, we've accused them of it in the T Twenty sphere of not being daring enough with their selections. So wouldn't necessarily be a be a surprise to see similar thinking in the one day side. And um, you know, maybe it's a a team in the mould of the wall, but. We, um, yeah, I, I, you know, putting out a solid side to to try and win a tournament, you know, on on balance, maybe it will it will do the do the job and home conditions uh, as well. Maybe we won't see loads of four hundreds, so it could could be a winning tactic. Um, we, you know, we are we're, we're nitpicking slightly, aren't we, in terms of the 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 guys they got in there. It's They're clear, a, yeah, they are they are phenomenal side. Favorites. Yeah, they are clear so, favourites. They've got some huge name players. Couple of questions of whether they are still huge players that um, kind of the all the PR will have you believe because uh, that that is what it is. And I also don't think that the way in which Raul Dravid has kind of set things up in terms of picking and choosing kind of different players, different experiences, etc., has been the best preparation. Um, but ultimately, everything is in their favour, right? They are the home team. They've got people who have hit runs in their own position. They've got big name players. They've got big game players. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to see how they lose in the semi-final of the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we we uh, we can but we can but hope. Um, no, it's uh, I'm looking looking forward to it. Um, obviously, uh, yeah, we're in we're in the little gap where uh, between the end of the hundred and the start of the World Cup, and there's still loads of cricket going on. So uh, there's still still no uh, no let up. But yeah, it's um, it's coming thick and fast, and looking forward to uh, some World Cup coverage and we will uh we'll be working out our plans for that in the in the near future and we will let you all know but um until then good good chat to you ross uh have a good evening Max. back to work back to work i go <laughs> and um we will uh we will see you all soon bye for now thanks for listening <laughs>